Okay, I think the recording is started. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, can someone just give me a quick thumbs up uh, in chat or using the emoji that you can see my screen? We have a hand. Excellent. Chat says yes, and you can see the Falcon Plus deck, correct? Cool. Thank you so much, folks. Uh, welcome to the Falcon Plus Community Governance Nerdy Governance Call for June twenty second. Uh, as usual, uh, you know, action-packed agenda, but some stability in the agenda itself and the conversation that we'll be having. Uh, so the focus points for today will be, uh, as they have been actually for the last couple of calls, the large data set notaries and the notary elections. Um, we also have a ton of learnings from the start of the notary election that I think should result in a bunch of new issues being filed. So I think next notary governance call will be uh, pretty, act uh, pretty, pretty active in terms of like the open issues to discuss, but I think today, at least from what I saw on GitHub, uh, the focus, as well as on Slack, the focus is definitely on uh, notary elections. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. In terms of data cap, like not a lot happening, like two manual allocations in the last week through GitHub, uh, resulting in about 25 tabby bytes of data cap being allocated. Um, only like net new, like four applications this week. Uh, eight of the eight, sorry, of the 15 total applications at the moment, Eight of them are duplicates or applications to existing uh, notaries that ran out of data cap. So not, not that many coming in. I suspect that this period of slowness is primarily because of the elections still. Um, expecting that this will probably pick up. Uh, hopefully this week, I think we should be wrapping up everything this week. Uh, but just so you're aware, uh, at this point in time, we're at 780 terabytes being allocated across 405 total allocations uh, to clients. Um, 265 of those are coming from the automated verifier. So, you know, across 100 uh, allocations a couple of weeks ago, still going strong. Um, and then about a third of that has been used in client deals, uh, which still only represents like 13 to 15% of the total. Uh, but especially with the large data set notaries and stuff, I expect these stats to start changing quite a bit. So the average time to data cap is now down to four hours and six minutes. This has been going down like three to four hours, literally every two weeks. Every two weeks that I've shared this slide, uh, it's been like down four hours or down 3.5 hours uh, for the last like two months or so. So nice work uh, for notaries being responsive. Uh, we've also started publishing stats around like responsiveness in general on GitHub. So this is sort of uh, similar to what Andrew was doing with the tooling on, on textile side, uh, but this basically shows you um, the average time to the first response from a notary, which is currently at uh, almost uh, 10 and a half days uh, and the time to data cap allocated through GitHub, which is about 15 days. So it, it does show that it takes about uh, four or five days between a notary and a client to get an allocation done. But there's definitely a lag uh, in terms of when the first response comes in. Um, and looking at the data, it's like pretty by model. There's like a set of notaries that are pretty active. And then there's a set that like to do these in chunks and we'll wait for several weeks and then do a lot of allocations at one time. Uh, so just as we continue to learn more, uh, happy to, you know, hear from any of you if you have any feedback or suggestions on improvements that can be made to the tooling, to the general like notary flow and experience to ensure that things are moving uh, effectively and efficiently for your needs. Uh, because, you know, ultimately our success here is were we able to get clients on default client. Uh, like people with real use cases, were they able to have a low friction experience on adopting uh, the networks and this technology and onboard their data onto this particular storage offering? And so, yeah, if, if you have any ideas and things we can do to improve the tooling, we'd love to hear them because making your life easier will make everyone in the ecosystem's life easier as well. Uh, and we're about to have a, a bunch of new notaries. Uh, so I guess future call out to new notaries if you're already in this call. Um, these are the kinds of things that we'd love to hear and get some fresh perspective on, especially as, as you start to do these processes for the first time. Do you have any, do you have any ideas? At this very moment, I'm gonna give you know, 20 seconds or so, just to see if anyone wants to, to share anything in chat or feel free to unmute. Okay, I think we should keep going. Um, this stats, 
these stats are available on the Falcon Plus dashboard that I shared, I think, a little while back. Um, we're working on getting a better URL for it, but if you ever need the link, feel free to let me know. It's, it's on Slack somewhere as well. Um, but this is, we just added a stats page to that. We were tracking some stuff. Similarly, there's the statistics still coming from, from Andrew's thing on Textile, uh, where if there's generally, uh, you know, a downward trend. I think one thing that like seems to be pretty interesting is that if you look at the all granted here, uh, it was 101 the last time I took this screenshot two weeks ago, and now it's at 100. Um, and this is something we noticed in when I was doing a bunch of the auditing for existing notaries as well, that there are definitely some clients that delete their GitHub issue after the data cap has been granted. Um, yeah, Andrew, that, that makes sense. Is the it's the tag that I assume says granted, basically, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I think it's just clients that are actually deleting issues. Like if you go and look through the repo, we're incrementing like near issue 500, but there's only like 370 issues open in the client onboarding repo. Um, and that's kind of interesting. Like, I don't really know what the incentive is because all there's like two dashboards out already. Both the dashboards are tracking the fact that an allocation was made and we can go back and look at the name of the client and uh, what address the allocation went to and which notary made the allocation. So I don't really know what the incentive is to remove the issue. Um, but that was a really interesting takeaway because there's a case where, I don't know, I think Stephen is, is here in the call. There was a case where like, without him being informed, one of the clients that he had given data cap to went and deleted the issue. And then I was like, wait, this is a problem because like in your bookkeeping plan, plan you state that everything is gonna be in GitHub and you're one of the few notaries that doesn't have like a copy of it off of GitHub. And the client was just like, well, well we just deleted it. And <laughs> it adds like an interesting layer of complexity where we have all the stats, we can track the flow of data cap, but we don't actually know what the application looked like. Um, and so that that's gonna, I think that's gonna be one of the, as I mentioned at the start of the call, that's one of like the sort of big takeaways from this round of notary elections, where that's probably something we wanna think about as a community. Like, do we want to, take a snapshot of index uh, or snapshot of the index github somewhere or just snapshot like new issues somewhere or do we even care like if we're getting the data that we need from the dashboards uh, so yeah just think about that see if you have an opinion to share i'll probably kick off an issue to discuss it this week and then it'll definitely be part of the next couple of uh, governance calls um yeah alice shared or even in slack yeah just just somewhere that I mean, you we could even have a bot that just right say application was received Here's a client, here's a notary, here's like, you know, the core information. Uh, that way, if we ever need to get in touch with the client, that's possible. Um, in this particular case, like the client actually responded to Stephen's application, uh, identifying themselves as well. And so that was helpful because I basically just ended up asking the client, you know, why did they delete the issue? So once I hear a response, maybe that'll be some useful insight for the rest of the community as well in terms of what could be the incentive for a client to choose not to share yeah but if anybody has thoughts i would love to hear them this is very interesting for me to see I'm trying to see if there's any hands going up or anything in chat Hey, Donna. Hey, I, I see you pleasure meeting you. Yes, yeah. thank you. I'm typing something in the chat. Oh, you could just share it. Just share it on audio if you don't mind. Okay. I was just wondering as far as, um, I recently applied as a notary, and I wanted to know what is the status of, of the approval process and how uh, that's coming along. Yeah. So I have that in the in the second half of this deck. Oh, So we should okay. get to it. Yeah, yeah. But we're very close. We have like two little auditing things that I think I, I wanted to share with the community, get some opinions on, and as soon as we're unblocked on that, um, okay, we're good to go. Yeah, so I'm ahead of schedule. Yeah, pleasure to meet you at least. Thank nice you. to meet you as well, Donna. All Thanks right. for making Thanks. it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, this will just be like one of those like weird things that I think we need to figure out uh, as we learn more about like client behavior, especially post allocation. We're reaching a scale that's like relatively large. Um, 
And I think over time, as we move towards more and more automation and less and less like work to do on behalf of clients and notaries, having like better audit trail for this like subjective or qualitative information with the client will be valuable. Um, so just just to see see some thoughts for you folks, uh, something to think about. But yeah, definitely it was interesting to see this, and and I did run into some explicit examples of this as well when checking some of the allocations that were happening. All right, on to the next thing, large data set notaries. So for those of you that are about to become elected as a notary, a little bit of info here is the moment your election is confirmed with the root key holders, which is that like there is a message that is on chain that has granted you verifier status and has given you a data cap grant, you are now eligible to elect yourself to be a signer on a large data set notary. Uh, a large data set notary is basically like a faucet for data cap for a singular client or singular project that requires like a large amount of data cap. And so we've set that number right now to be between 500 tebibytes and five tebibytes, but there's been feedback in this room in the past that maybe we need to reduce the lower bound to like 100 tebibytes. Uh, so that's probably a conversation we should have. However, at this point, we're getting a ton of applications. And so having more notaries that are monitoring that would be great. Uh, it'd be awesome if you could help in the due diligence. So feel free to hop on there now even and ask any questions that you think you'd want to know about a client in order to give them that much data cap. And then once you are signed on as a notary, like I know Emma, for example, uh, you're about to become a notary um, most likely, but at the time you were not when you suggested that you'd be willing to support it. Like that's great. Like if you have any other, uh, you know, other applications that you've seen that you'd like to support. Sorry, sorry to call you out. It's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> yes, I would love to have, I would you know, love to, to see it. engagement like that. <laughs> so Thank you. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Thank you. Yeah, of course. It, no, it, it's great. It's very really nice to see uh, the act, the sort of input is to, to contribute to the community already. And so I guess open call to action for everyone is go and review those apps. Even if you're not a notary, you're welcome to participate in the due diligence process. Like this is, we're trying to run this thing as an experiment and show that we're able to provide value in the best way possible uh, for clients that need access to a lot of data cap. And so the, the path here, again, for the new notaries is seven notaries uh, across at least three regions have to elect themselves to serve as multi-signers on a wallet that effectively serves as a data cap faucet for this client. So a client would basically come and say, hey, I want another you know, 100 tebibytes or 50 tabby bytes and four out of the seven notaries would just say, yep, sounds good. You haven't violated any of the stuff that we we sort of heard from you in the initial application, so it looks fine. And so the, the intention there is to provide a much higher amount of data cap than would otherwise be available to them through individual notaries. Uh, and then also start testing ways in which we can increase the leverage in the system or ways in which we can increase uh, sort of how clients that are worthy of, of large amounts of data cap are being served uh, and their needs are being met. Um, one of the open sort of ongoing conversations has been uh, Slingshot and support for Slingshot teams in this. Uh, and so the, the quick summary of last week's conversation was, uh, and not last week's, I guess, the last call was Andrew requested that the Slingshot team comes with an opinion. And we also had Faye who had uh, submitted the actual application um, for the genome rights project, which is the large data set notary application that's causing this conversation for the most part. Uh, so the opinion that I had shared on behalf of Slingshot was basically that uh, it doesn't really make sense to uh, provide data cap to, uh, to teams that are already being incentivized with monetary rewards to perform the same function, which is onboard data. However, uh, you know, some notaries definitely still have been doing that at a much smaller scale. And so we're also supportive of doing it at a larger scale. And Faye raised the point that like, he wanted to draw a line, which is like, oh, give it to those that are guaranteeing that they're not storing it with miners that belong to them. And then we went down like a sort of line of questioning on like how we could do that in a way that's like safe and not being abused. Um, and so I think this is still a bit of an ongoing conversation uh, where like, it seems like you know, about half the notaries believe that we shouldn't do this and the other half believe that we should. Uh, and so, yeah, I would love to hear, uh, even if you're in this call and you're not a notary or you're about to become a notary, uh, if you have an opinion. Uh, I don't know if Faye's here today or Charles is here. That those have been some of the vocal uh, participants in this discussion so far. Um, so we'd love to hear from others as well. 
to continue sort of pushing this conversation forward. So yeah, feel well, free to drop something in chat or unmute. Yeah, this is this is Darnell again. Um, since I'm jumping in with both feet, I think that one of the things that I've seen is I have seen a lot of interest of people doing large data caps because just the process of how much storage that a lot of companies are storing internally, they're storing between um, maybe 600 to 700 terabytes. But one of the things that I've been looking at is a lot of large uh, data caps for audit logs being read out, written to the Filecoin blockchain. So I think that this is a good area that when people are starting to combine and to consolidate systems logs and log event files, that these files get to be extremely large and they do want to distribute those. So I think that's a great use case. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, definitely something that I think the community would be up for supporting, um, especially at that scale. That seems like the right size for it as well, which is great. Yes, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Which yeah, that's that's great. The I'd love to hear from some folks who've also participated in the slingshot competition. If you have an opinion on how this would fit in, um, so Donna, this is specific to slingshot as well, which is an incentivized competition where clients are effectively rewarded for onboarding large amounts of specific data sets, so like curated, public, open scientific data sets, um, and so those clients effectively compete to onboard data uh, through phases and are rewarded in like a Filecoin grant. And so the conversation around this particular topic has been, should we also give data cap to those clients? Because they're already being paid to make deals or being rewarded in making deals. Um, should they also receive data cap to make those deals easier and, and make it lucrative for other miners in the system to, to provide services for those clients? Um, and so there's, there's definitely like a, a split here. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to hear any opinions in the room, regardless of whether or not you're an earth ray. Uh, it's been a pretty active conversation in the community. And so I'd, I'd like to continue ensuring that we're having the conversation. So yeah, feel free to unmute. Feel free to drop something in chat. Anybody uh, that might have an opinion on this. Well, uh, like I said last time, uh, when you're participating in Sling, uh, you're not 100% uh, sure you get the reward. So when you're sending out a lot of data, uh, data uh, which brings a lot of cost uh, per bandwidth uh, or data you use in your transit lines or whatever it is, um, the data cap might uh, yeah, uh, help you cover some of that cost. Uh, um, yeah, unless you store it on your own miners. Right, so but, that's the, but my... yeah, that's what the thing is then you're just, that, that only applies in the case that you're storing it with yourself and Faye, the case that Faye was making was explicitly supporting it only in the cases where it's provable that the client is not a miner, like the client is not serving the data themselves. Yeah. But then you, you send it to like six miners or eight or 10 or 12. So the more data you send out, the more cost you get. Uh, yeah. If you do it. Uh, but but data you're, not, isn't... You're, not, you're not sure you get the reward for that because Slingshot is not... not uh, reward secured that's true right because depending on like what happens in the judging period you could go to zero yeah so if you store it on your own miners or at least miners nearby you can cut on your cost of bandwidth and if you store it externally like on 10 or 12 miners in the community like face it then he has bandwidth cost so the data cap can help him uh, well lower some of that cost uh, he won't lower any of his costs, but, right? Unless no, he's paying for the deals. Well, yeah, he's paying for the deals when it's unverified. But if he's doing it on uh, verified deals, he, he doesn't need to pay. So in that way, he can lower his cost a bit. So it's an indirect benefit for him. But still, it's a benefit. Fair enough. I mean... Yeah, I guess what you're saying is for clients participating in Slingshot, they would want this so that in the case that they're storing with other miners, their potential downside is somewhat mitigated where their costs are like capped or costs are yeah. reduced. Because the reward is not secured. So you're not sure that you get any reward. Uh, and your costs are there anyway. Your bandwidth cost. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Any other opinions? Also, if you 
feel like you don't have enough context to share your opinion, drop that in chat as well. Because I know that this has been an ongoing topic for like a month at this stage. And so I can quickly provide a summary uh, on where we're at. But we'd definitely like to sort of push this towards closure and some sort of resolution uh, you know, this week or in the next one. Any other folks here that have an opinion? Feel free to raise your hand, drop in chat, unmute. This is specifically on support for slingshot teams receiving large data cap allocations. Instead of opinions, maybe are there any questions as well that nobody's have that perhaps we can answer um, either myself or Faye who filed the application or the participants in Slingshot? So for those of you that aren't as familiar with the competition, happy to provide additional context as well so you can continue forming an opinion. Probably wait maybe one more minute and then move on to the next topic. Yeah, Nelson uh, shares in chat to make the slingshot participants distributed more evenly their deals. There should be a clear due diligence process to make sure there's minimum self dealing. Yes, uh, Nelson, that's hard to regulate though. It's very hard to know when a client is a minor if the client doesn't disclose that they're a minor. So the point that Faye was making about this in the last call was that he was like, "I can show you my setup. I only have you know these two machines." and nothing will end up with these two machines. And so he uh, was stressing the point that like, there is some way for him to prove that, but it's very difficult. In an anonymous peer-to-peer -peer network, a new minor ID show up, you know, a dime a dozen. Yeah, Nelson, this is part of why, I mean, like even when we were doing Slingshot, we initially had a no self-dealing rule. And then, I mean, Peter is here. Maybe he can share some of his thoughts from context uh, prior art in Slingshot. But that rule was removed because it was just so difficult to gauge and so difficult to track that. Um, and so as a result, we just stopped. We just let people like do the self-dealing because it's, it's very difficult to reliably make that call every time. Yeah, uh, just to clarify this a little bit, uh, it's not that we uh, entirely removed uh, the, like self-dealing is a problem, you know, uh, conceptually. Uh, what we did change is instead of uh, making it an enforcement issue, we tried to make it a um, an incentive issue. So instead of saying you cannot, you can start with yourself and it's up to us to catch you. We said you have to store with n number of miners, I believe it was four, and it is up to you to pay for all of them if you want to be the one uh, maintaining them. So by uh, setting up more and more of such uh, incentive driven um, mechanisms that basically make it not great for you, to store with yourself, this is how we can get out of uh, this like kind of like uh, local maximum where we are right now. Yeah, that's right. We ended up saying minimum four miners. That's correct. Yeah, I think this would be hard to track though. 
for in this case too, right? Like the same thing would apply where even if we made, it's not like, if anything, what we're doing is we're taking the fact that it was an incentive problem and then making the incentives easier, I guess, if we provide data gap. In that effectively, like everyone is incentivized to be at the other end of that deal, including the client themselves. And uh, this is uh, a relatively unexplored field uh, for us, uh, relatively new. So if anyone can uh, come up with, uh, you know, uh, schemes for this that are uh, a little bit, you know, more thought through and still seem to stand up, uh, then by all means, like share them with us in, in Slack or uh, in our next call or uh, on GitHub somewhere. Because uh, ideally, yes, we want to make sure that this system is used for good to incentivize actual useful storage and not be used by folks uh, just, you know, trying to inflate their uh, static in the power table. Because, yeah. Ideas welcome. Are there any nodes today that feel strongly uh, at this very point in time on supporting Slingshot or not supporting Slingshot? Or are, are most of you sort of waiting to see what the rest of the community decides and then either will align with that or at that point raise a conversation? See a lot of nodes in the call. I'm not gonna call out people, but would love to hear some opinions if, if there are any. Okay, that makes sense. And so for those of you that are that are sort of waiting, what would what would be helpful in driving this to closure? Would it be useful to hear? from the people that have stronger opinions, like maybe we have a sort of more curated conversation at the next call uh, where we bring in the, the people that feel strongly, uh, like maybe Faye will do another quick presentation, something like that we can request to come talk. I know Charles has a stronger opinion as well. Wynan has an opinion. Um, I have an opinion as one of the people that are on Slingshot, like maybe we can do like a dedicated sort of session uh, for that. Would that be helpful or would you rather we test this with constraints and see how it plays out, or would you rather we just make a decision, you know, maybe the Falcon Foundation or whatever just says for now do X. What would be the preferred path here? Julian, hello. Yeah, we hear you. Yeah, so, so personally, uh, actually I'm a slingshot participant, so I prefer to stay away from this discussion. That's completely reasonable. Thank you for absolving yourself from that. Like, that's great. Makes sense. Any of the other notaries, the, the ones that are calling out no strong opinion, like what would be, what would be helpful for now in your opinion? Yeah, wait to see if there's any responses in chat. I'm going to keep moving along because we do have a, a few more topics. Um, oh, there's something in chat. Nelson, are many slingshot clients finding it difficult to send deals and getting many errors, which causes them less often to do deals with third party miners? Question mark. Are there any slingshot clients here that have thoughts on this? Now, so I can provide some insight from the judging perspective. I think where the biggest issue for clients is not that they can't make the storage deal. It's that like retrieval needs to be guaranteed by the miner. Uh, and it's hard to force a miner to ensure that they're going to serve every retrieval that comes in. 
and retrievability is a factor in how a participant will be scored. And so there's a ton of deals happening. I mean, the last phase had like 300,000 deals in like a two month period, which is absurdly high. Um, this phase is already like nearing, I think 130, 140,000 uh, with still you know, several weeks to go, four weeks to go. And so I think the storage deal aspect of it is not the difficult part. I think the difficult part is incentivizing retrieval. Um, that's also part of why I, I, I don't personally think like data cap is the right solution because it doesn't actually solve the problem. Uh, but it's still vetted data, it's valuable data. And so if we still want to support bringing it onto the network, I, I would support that decision if the community decided so. Anyway, I think we can continue to add any points in chat if you have any questions that would help you clarify your opinion or uh, if you're a notary that's on the fence and would love to provide some insight on what would help you pick a side, uh, do share and chat and, and we can make it happen in the next call. With that, uh, let's talk about, oh, I forgot to update this number. It's a lot more than nine. It's actually, I think 13 now, one, two. Yep, 13 new app, 13 total applications that are open. Um, so far where we're at is Falcon Discover actually had seven notaries self-select. So we actually had like 10, uh, but three of the notaries were ineligible at the time that they elected themselves, which is either you're not yet a notary or you are a notary that finished your allocation. Um, but there are seven notaries that have active ongoing allocations and grants. Uh, and you, I think yesterday was the last one where we got the seventh one. So just to provide support. So this will be really interesting. I'm excited because this will be the first time we get to experiment with this kind of data cap faucet. So I dropped a message in the issue for this one. Uh, if you're one of the notaries, I can read out later. Um, but I think many of you are in this call, actually. Uh, you should have been tagged in GitHub. Just give me a thumbs up on the response to confirm that that's the address that you want on the multi-sig. Um, it may be a little complicated, like in some cases, like Andrew, I know you're already using a multi-sig for your uh, notary role. Uh, I don't know if you want a multi-sig that participates in a multi-sig, uh, or if you just want like a different address that's going to become a signer onto this multi-sig. Uh, feel free to sort of respond in the GitHub flow so that I have the actual addresses that we can craft as part of the message. Um, but yeah, it looks like we'll be moving forward with that. So as soon as you can, if you're notary on this, uh, you know, feel free to sort of confirm. Also, if you're notary on this, which I believe, again, many of you are on this call, we would love to have somebody like champion this, like be like the first sort of uh, lead notary that helps serve as like the captain of the notaries uh, on behalf of the client and, and ensures that like things are generally going well. Um, if anybody here is willing to do that, like I would love to hear that now or on the GitHub issue, uh, just, just because like this is the first time we're going to get to do this. And so it'd be awesome to have somebody that's excited to sort of take charge and ensure that this plays out well. Um, I believe this is a five pebby byte allocation, which is absolutely massive. Uh, you know, this actually goes through that would, you saw the stats in the first page, right? Where like less than one pebby bytes actually been allocated to a client so far and 200, 300 Tabby bytes been used in deals. And so if, if the onboarding rate that the Falcon Discover folks shared in the application is accurate, it would be multiplying the efficacy of the program very, very quickly. Um, yeah, Julian, I, I saw that you proposed yourself as, as sort of the, the captain or the champion notary for Estuary. Um, I don't think that one has seven notaries yet. I'm waiting to see if there's any others. Um, so yeah. I, we will go over these and I serve as a quick reminder for notaries that want to participate for, for, this, for this specific one. Um, Julian, I'm not saying you need a volunteer for this as well, but if you want to, uh, definitely the option is there. For which one are we talking about? Uh, Falcon Discover. No. <laughs> Jonathan that is on the court. <laughs> no, no, no pressure. No, uh, okay. We'll see. Yeah, no, no pressure. I know you've already sort of listed yourself as the lead for the other project. That's totally fine. Uh, but of course, it's six of you. How much the the how much data cap they are requesting? Five pebibytes. Yeah, okay. And I think their application said they would probably do another round after this. And Reba is here from the project, so we can just ask him. Uh, Peter, what what is the total amount that you'd want to onboard over time? I in an ideal world. Yeah. 
I don't know if he's here. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm muted. Uh, oh. I do not have the number in front of me right now, actually. I believe it was, I'm sorry, I, I do not want to misspeak. Uh, I will, that's totally uh, reasonable. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back once I find it. No, <laughs> that's really that. fine. I think for now, at least we know it's five. Yeah, but, uh, the, uh, the the amount of data that uh, we're looking to onboard, like uh, without redundancy, is uh, about uh, twelve petabytes. But I'm not, uh, I I not have the numbers on the redundancy right now. How 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 many copies do we actually make? So I cannot give you the actual numbers. Yeah. So the twelve petabyte is um, more than what you already sent. I mean, the hard drive you ship you ship. Sorry. Our, uh, is no, less than no, that. It, no, 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 it says not that. Uh, this is our trial. It will definitely not cover everything we need for sure. It's, it's mm. more than five, 100%. I see. Okay. Yeah, so I think this is the first of some for them and also the first of many for us as a community uh, because it's the first time I think we'll actually have a multi sig notary that's up and running and, and providing data cap for a client. So yeah, excited. Hopefully, you know, as soon as I have all seven of you confirming addresses and somebody who can serve as a DRI, uh, we'll kick off the process to get the root key holders to sign uh, this multi sig. So you, you don't have to say it now, but if you can go to GitHub issue and self elect yourself, that'd be great. Uh, for those seven of you, I think, I think Neo, you're one of them, Andrew, you're one of them, the Fenbushi notary, Zaha, you're one of them. I believe Julian was part of it. Uh, Dr. Ann, I think might have been, and Masaki, if I recall. So that covers the requirements. I think maybe even Steve for the seventh. I can't remember now. I'm sorry. I apologize, but definitely did cover the three the three regions. We just need somebody to, uh, you know, elect themselves as a lead notary, and then we need all of you to confirm to me that I have your addresses correctly, and then we'll kick off the process, which is great. We, uh, there's a, there looks like there's a question in chat for Peter, if you don't mind answering it from the discover perspective. Um, I wanted to make a call out on the other applications, like great that we've got seven notaries for discover. There's still 12 open applications. Uh, would absolutely love to see any questions or support from other notaries or the rest of the community that thinks that any of these projects are worth supporting. So of course the 3000 rice genome is uh, an ongoing conversation is part of the, the slingshot stuff. Um, but yeah, Estuary, Taipei, OSC China, GW Technology, Shanghai Zinshu, Contendos Foundation, Chengdu, Digital Media Industry Base, NFT Storage, HNA Group, Protocol Labs, Dealbots Project, and Phil Swan FSD Project. Uh, it would be great to see if you have any questions or this is something you'd like to support as a notary. Um, especially those of you that are about to get elected as notaries, like this is a great way, especially if you receive an allocation that was not as large as you'd hope. This is an awesome way to like continue impacting the network at scale. Um, so would highly recommend checking these out, dropping any questions that you would have personally that would make you comfortable supporting a data cap allocation for any of these so that once you have your address on chain as a verifier, we can easily add you to the multi-sig. So with that, the, the topic that everybody's excited about, um, notary elections. Uh, and so quick recap, we updated the target notary count to five for NA, EU, and China. Uh, the remaining regions stay at three. Uh, the current plan was effectively that we wanted to ensure we hit like this min sort of data cap allocation um, for for the base for like each of these regions effectively. Uh, and so, what we've got so far is the following recommendation. Um, so for those of you that are in this call and you're interested in seeing if you're likely to become a notary, uh, this is where we're at. And so Asia minus GCN, uh, we'd like to have 12 ships foundation, math wallet and uh, Masaki as notaries. Europe, we'd probably have the Falcon Foundation, Julian, uh, Rears uh, from Tech Hedge and Speedium. Um, Creative China region is still sort of open. We'll, I'll just share some details on that. Uh, NA, uh, five notaries, XN matrix, performance, Coda, Sorry, performative with a flag. I'll discuss that as well. Coda, Phil Swan, Secure Experts. Um, and then in Oceania, we'll have our first non EU, MA, or Asia notary uh, with Holon Innovations uh, serving as a notary in Australia. So, pretty excited. Uh, the couple of flags that I wanted to share were 
in GCR. Simon, I think we're waiting for just one fix the application before he's considered good and electable. Um, between uh, for ByteBase, I believe there's still an open conversation. So I know Eric is here in the call. Uh, you sent me a message last night. I still need to go through and, and read through that. Sorry, I didn't have a chance uh, to look through that yesterday. Uh, but we needed to ensure the uh, effectively what we're doing is making sure we're scoring you accurately. Uh, but if that does go through, then we end up with eight notaries in China, which is a lot, uh, which is great. I, I know we set the max at seven previously, um, but we also had a thing where if people were tied, then we would continue adding everybody at that level of being tied. And so that's how we'd get eight. And so once we can validate that these are indeed all like valid applications and correct, uh, we can share this uh, and finalize this list. The last thing I wanted to call out was on the performer front. So there's a sort of potential like dispute kind of conversation happening. So I would highly recommend uh, if you are a notary to check out that particular application 132, because I'm having a bunch of back and forth there uh, where I'm trying to get some input on exactly what's happening. Uh, but this is a case in which there's a notary in NA, but all the allocations were made in China. Um, and we had talked about like serving applications from outside your region, but that was typically in the cases that that region no longer had data cap or like didn't have any active notaries providing data cap. So like, you know, there was a case with Europe in the last cycle where it became very difficult for clients. I think why not you're an example where you ended up needing to go to notaries in other regions because there were just no active allocations happening in Europe anymore. Um, but, you know, there are plenty of notaries in China who were serving plenty of applications. Uh, and for whatever reason, in this case, this one NA notary served only applications in China. And so my recommendation was that either they should apply to be a notary in China or that should not be the case. Um, yeah, if anybody has any opinions, definitely check out that issue. Let me know. Uh, that that sort of is like the last one to, to finalize on. Um, there's a question in the chat uh, from Darnell. What does the rounded score mean? Uh, so the rounded score is how you can qualify for certain levels of data cap. So if you're rounded at one, that means you're eligible for 10 tabbybytes. If you're rounded at two, it's 100 tabbybytes. If you're three, it's one tabbybyte. Uh, and so effectively, Donald, that sets the cap on how much data cap you'll receive in this particular round of elections. Uh, most new notaries end up coming in at the 10 tabbybyte level, uh, which they run out of fairly quickly. But the intention is that you're showing uh, that you're competent as a notary and, and you're rewarded for that in the next election cycle because there's a row in that that basically says, did you successfully allocate like some amount X of data cap in the past? And so um, that's what that number means. Um, and so unless there's, any, yeah, unless there's any specific questions on this, I would love to sort of share some summary stats and next steps. Um, anybody have questions on this table or any thoughts? Cool. So where we're at right now is basically the following expected distribution, is your minus GCN at three notaries with 300 tabbybytes, EU with four notaries, just over one tabbybyte. Uh, Greater China, depending on if it was seven or eight notaries, will roughly be at like four or four and a half tabbybytes. NA has five notaries over one tabbybyte, and Oceania will have one notary at 100 tabbybytes. Um, what I did want to call out is that there's a reason this is all less than, and that's because like, of course, like notaries still have like data cap uh, caps or data cap maximums. Uh, so if you're a notary that was eligible for up to, uh, I don't know, let's say you're eligible for 100 tabbybytes, you applied again, uh, you had 50 tabbybytes remaining, uh, you, you're, if you requalified for 100 or requested another 100, you would basically end up getting 50 more. So you're topped up to your maximum. Uh, because the point of that rubric is also to flag like vulnerabilities in the system where it's like notaries with certain inputs should max out at a certain output. And so these numbers will look very different once we confirm the set and provide everybody with the amount of data cap that uh, it was requested. Because in some cases, notaries also requested numbers that were in between ranges. 
So there were a few applications that were at 50 tabibytes or 500 tabibytes as opposed to the full of the range. Um, and so once we adjust for all that with the final set, uh, these numbers will definitely drastically go down. Uh, but yeah, just, just to flag uh, that all of these are very, very high upper maxima. Uh, but it's, it's nice to see that like the amount of data cap total in circulation is about to go up drastically. We're also going to have a bunch of new notaries that will be participating, hopefully actively in these calls and in furthering the community, but also in like conversations like the large data set notaries and just bringing in uh, more voices, more notaries to ensure that, that we're evolving as a community to be more efficient and more effective in serving real use cases on the network. So yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, thank you for those of you that have stuck out uh, and applied for this. With that, uh, next steps. So the first thing is there's, there's the two sort of applications that actually require like uh, info to be unblocked. The first is, so Eric, the input that we need from you for ByteBase's application on uh, proving the participation um, in terms of, oh, sorry, I just got a question in the chat for NA. Five notaries for new applications or for the whole, uh, five total new uh, notaries will be serving as active notaries in NA. Cool, yeah, so if you if you have thoughts on the Performer app or the ByteBase app and, and can provide sort of input on how we should be supporting that, I would greatly appreciate it. So those are app numbers 169 and 132. So if you just go to the notary dominance repo, uh, and look at issue number 169 or 132. Or you can go to this table, which is on issue 118. And of course, that third column is just links to all the applications. Uh, so you can click through and check it out. Um, so yeah, uh, another question in the chat, how much can 2.6 points get? 500 tabibytes or one tabibyte? Uh, so 2.6 gets rounded up to a three. Uh, so based on the current scoring, that's actually one tabibyte. Um, I think we'll have some adjustments we want to make to the rubric based on this based on this round of scoring. But for now, uh, XN matrix, I believe you're at two six as well. Yeah, so you'll probably get one per but if you request that, which is great. Uh, it of course depends on how much data cap you request at the top of the application as well. Um, anyway, so yeah, if you have any thoughts on those two open issues, please hop on to the issue. Uh, help us resolve this as soon as possible. It will help unblock the rest of the process. Um, I'm about to go through the remaining regions. So I think NA, all the applications ended up getting notarized. So literally all notaries in other regions, I'm going to drop the disclosures on your app today, uh, which you should read and confirm that you're willing to comply with. Um, and once you are able to do that, uh, we can effectively start the process with root key holders to sign. So that's all that's left is you need to sign those disclosures, uh, which is awesome. The the thing that comes after that, though, it's non-trivial. You do need to get set up with the app. Uh, and so the first question that you get from the general Falcon Plus registry tooling team will be, do you have a ledger? Uh, so if you don't have a ledger, you should probably get a ledger. Uh, you're going to need a ledger to log into this stuff. Uh, if anybody needs assistance getting a ledger, please get in touch with me on Slack, uh, and we can have the conversation um, to ensure that you're set up. The expectation is basically that, like, once your allocation is given to the address that we confirm with you, um, the ledger is what you'll use to sign in to the plus.fill.org uh, website, which is the Falcon Plus registry, where based on your GitHub login and your ledger login, uh, the app will help you automate a bunch of your interaction with when you approve um, allocations or de decline allocations and stuff. So uh, that'll be useful. The other thing is there's a couple of resources that are going to help you get started. Like there'll be a couple of docs on like onboarding new notaries and stuff that I will send your way. Uh, you'll be added to a Slack channel called Falcon Plus Notaries, where it's uh, called the notaries. Uh, that channel is mostly useful for communication with other notaries. Like in case like you have a client in one region that's applying a different one and you want to like, bounce that client back, or if you want to have like ask questions about a particular allocation, uh, that's like the right place to do it. Um, the last thing I was, I've been sort of, proposing is uh, pairing up new notaries with existing notaries. Uh, so effectively, if you are a notary that's not served as a notary before, or this is not a reallocation, which there are many uh, in this in this particular round, uh, basically having like a buddy system that says, hey, like help me like learn the processes or like somebody to ramp up with or uh, iterate on your rubric, your processes, your allocation methodology. Um, so 
would be great if there are any existing notaries or notaries that are getting reallocations that like to volunteer and sort of helping make this happen. Um, I see a hand from Julian. Yeah, uh, one question. Um, maybe you just explain it or I, I miss it. But uh, so if we have remaining data cap and we are uh, elected to be notary again, uh, how do we do? Yeah, so let's we can walk through your example if you don't mind, Julian. Yep. Okay, so I believe you requested 100 heavy bytes this time, correct? Yes. Okay, and so you qualified at 1.7. 1.7 puts your rounded score at 2, which means you do qualify for 100. Uh, if I recall correctly, you have either two or four heavy bytes left. Yes. Yeah, exactly. so you would get... A few. Sorry? I have a few, yeah. Yeah, so let's say you have two, right? Uh, so you qualified for 100, you requested 100, you have two outstanding, you'd, you'd get an allocation of 98 heavy bytes. Okay. You're based on the rubric, you're capped at 100 at any given point in time. But, but, but is it going to be allocated on the same address or on the new one? Yeah, so right now the FIP, uh, the FIP yeah, was the FIP passed, is... but I don't think all the implementations had a chance to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I think for now to reduce friction, we might request you for a different address. Ah, okay, I see. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was just wondering if it's not going to be on the same address or not, because actually, if I just go back to the, um, um, the multi-address for the large deal, yeah. uh, do we need data cap on this address or not? So only at the time that you, um, the, I, you don't, let me be very, let me I be don't. Clear. Yeah, you don't need that particular address to be a verifier as far as I know. I will double check. Um, what we need is the manual check that at, at that time you are an active notary, which you are at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. And uh, yeah, the, I, I don't know, I don't think we added validation that basically says like that particular address needs to be like verifier status. Uh, but I will double check uh, because that was a conversation at some point um, that probably should be a requirement once we fix the problem of uh, receiving allocations at the same address. But until that happens, I think I had asked to not have that be a blocker. Okay. And the last one is uh, like for Discover, they asked for five petabytes. Um, but I, I guess the, the seven different notaries that, are, that may sign the, the the data cap allocation are we going to assign five petabyte upfront or are we going no so but do we do we have like a limit for each each yeah. time we allocate do we set to, to five terabyte or 10 or 100 i don't know yeah so there, there is a limit um the way it works is basically the the first the it's this is documented in the repo so if i misspeak i would recommend that you just check it okay. um but if you go to the readme of the repo, it should say that the first allocation is basically capped at like, I think it's what the client claims they would want to use in half a week, uh, or I think 5% of the total amount. Then the second allocation is 10% of the total amount or what they would claim to use in one week. And then the third is 20% or what they would claim to use in two weeks. Um, so the, the maximum first allocation for five terabytes should be 250 terabytes. if I'm doing that math right. Maybe I'm not. And then the second one would be 500 terabytes. And then the third would be one terabyte. And then every one after the third would be 20% at most. Um, and there's an expectation that 90% of the previous allocation has been used before the next allocation goes out the door. OK. And five, five petabytes is the maximum they can. Uh... Yeah, right now, five heavy bytes is the maximum that any project can. I mean, projects can apply multiple times if they want. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. But per application, yes. OK. OK, cool. Thank you. Yeah, so existing notaries, if you are interested in providing support for new notaries, that would be absolutely awesome. You know, please feel free to volunteer yourself in the thread that we have in the notary channel or let, let me know or share right now. Uh, I would love to sort of match like the, the handful of new notaries that we have with somebody that they can uh, learn a little bit from and can provide as a resource. Yeah, with that open some open discussion. Um, Julian, you still have a hand up. Is there anything else you wanted to share? Nope. Okay. There was a there was a point earlier from Eric. Uh, we fund these guys. Check it out regarding data uploading and can save time no matter for data center or LDN issue. Uh, so I think that might be, yeah, this is a really interesting 
really, really interesting uh, fit proposal. Uh, Eric, if you're in the call uh, and you're comfortable sharing, I would love if you could chat about this for a few minutes. Uh, if not, I can do a quick summary. Okay, I'm here. Uh, sorry, I cannot scroll the screen. So could you please scroll down? Yeah, uh, because yeah. we have set up a, a flow chart to let everybody know it's just easier. Uh, goes down, go. goes down. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's this one. So for the for the right side, uh, that's the current procedures. Uh, based on the previous informations, uh, we have. Uh, let me say. Uh, just a second. Uh, for the previous uh, information data, we can say the average time to the data cap that's a four day six hours, and the average time to the first response from the notary that's a 10 days 13 hours and uh, also the the time to the data cap allocated on chain that's a 15 days and seven hours so for us that's um, uh, no efficiency for for the data cap and also we just uh, uh, make this brief chart according to the the ot dong suggestion and uh, uh, some people who make uh, uh, more suggestions with, with this one so uh, if we can let the client upload the data first. And while they are applicate for the data cap, that's why we can save in at, at least eight to seven days. So if, if they cannot have in the data cap from any notary, at least for, for the, uh, I mean, for the protocol lab or for the Falcon uh, network, we have the real data. We have the real data to to storage to storage in the Ficon uh, network, and for the client, they can uh, make the application for another lottery. And for the miners, if they having the closer deal with uh, data cap, that means they can save another uh, eight or seventeen days to, I mean, faster to seal the seal the data because uh, we found the sealing time of the real data. I mean, the data cap. Uh, every 33 gigabyte will cost us around 80 to 20 hours. That's a quite a lot of time. So uh, we're just making uh, this a uh, little bit uh, changes. So for the proposed procedure, we can save in the time and make the whole procedure more eff efficiencies for that. So, so we will have an open discussion to let everybody to, to yeah. get it or make the procedure better. That's, That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's really great. Thank you so much. This is a really, really interesting and very compelling proposal. I would highly recommend uh, if you haven't checked this out. I know Eric already dropped the link. I'll drop it in again. Uh, you know, please contribute your suggestions to this conversation. I know some of you have already seen it, uh, which is great. Uh, but yeah, Eric, thank you so much for joining the call and, and sharing a little bit more info. Um, if anybody has any immediate thoughts they'd like to share, please do. If not, I know we're a couple of minutes over time, so I'll probably wrap up soon. But yeah, definitely check out the issue, uh, share any thoughts that you have um, on it. Thanks, Eric, again, for being here and, and, and sharing and, and helping push uh, this kind of really awesome thinking along. Cool. I think with that, uh, we'll probably call it for today. Um, thank you, folks, for being here, as usual. Uh, thanks for participating in yet another iteration of the Nordic Governance Call. Uh, check out the FIP. Uh, check out the open applications that have uh, some kind of audit work left. Uh, make sure that if you're a existing notary on the Discover application, confirm the address and elect yourself as a champion. If you're about to be a notary, then watch your GitHub notifications. You should get this set of disclosures today during my workday. Uh, please sign them as soon as you can uh, so we can proceed with the next steps of providing you notary status on chain. Uh, and if you have any thoughts on supporting Slingshot or any of the other disc, uh, any of the large scale, large data set notary applications, please hop into that repo, share your thoughts and questions in the comments uh, of those issues. Uh, lots for you to do, uh, lots for everyone to do, but awesome progress as usual. Thanks so much for being here. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, let's continue the conversation in the Falcon Plus channel and Slack uh, for any open topics that you'd like to continue uh, discussing. Uh, thanks for being here. Have a good rest of your day.